Eight Man is a classic series of manga and anime from the 60s created by Kazumasa Hirai. The man who created Genma Tyson with Shotaro Ishinomori. It's about Eight Man, a superpowered robot with the consciousness of private investigator Hachiro Azuma, killed by a group of criminals and brought back to life by Professor Tani. After coming to terms with the death of his human body and his continued existence in a metal one, he decides to go out and bring justice to the guys who killed him. He then reveals his new identity to his old friend, Police Chief Tanaka, and promptly rejoins the police force as two different people. Detective Yokota, his new fabricated identity meant to conceal his true self, and the cyborg cop, Eight Man. Thus begin his crazy superheroic adventures, ranging from relatively down-to-earth crime drama stories with quick bursts of robot action, to Godzilla-esque giant monster battles. As for why he's called Eight-Man to begin with, there are actually two different reasons. For one, he's the eighth model of his type, and second, he represents, all on his very own, the entire eighth division of the Tokyo police force. He uses small energy containers to recharge which happen to look like cigarettes. This is brought up by certain reviewers as an example of people in the 60s being so stupid they thought cigarettes gave you superpowers. The real reason is simply to conceal his robotic nature when in human form and it also makes for some funny situations. Oh no, you have to recharge but you're also stuck in a no smoking area, how will you get out of this one, eight man? The series had the same basic premise as Robocop 24 years earlier, along with possibly being anime and manga's first cyborg superhero. But the influence seems to go even further. For one, Eight Man can impersonate anyone he wants, meaning there's a lot of the kind of disguise-based trickery that later became commonplace. For characters like Lupin the Third and Cyborg 007, who happens to be my favorite Cyborg 0. 009 character. What's more, multiple episodes, including an epic and very surreal two-parter that the series ends on, focus on villains with psychic powers. You might have heard that creator Kazumasa Hirai's Genma Tyson had an influence on Akira and other such anime and manga, but Eight Man's use of such characters predates it, as does Ishinomori's mutant Sabu from 1961. But what's particularly interesting is the aforementioned two-parter featuring antagonistic, hyper-intelligent, psychic children, not even teenagers, but kids. This series can be placed in a subset of anime and manga that I constantly take note of, yet never see anyone else bring up. That of film noir, but with robots. I suspect Yokoyama started it, but there's been quite a bunch of these over the decades, and I find them all inherently appealing due to the unquestionably cool premise. With all of that history out of the way, is 8-Man worth experiencing in this day and age? Is it outclassed by everything that came after it? Or is it still unique enough to be viewed and read over 50 years later? Well, as someone who's never watched a single 60s TV anime in its entirety before this one, and who picked it up purely on a whim with zero expectations, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I should point out that the Japanese Blu-rays are not translated, so the only way to view this in English is through the fuzzy 60s dub recordings and the occasional bootleg subtitle track. The dub has a lot going against it, it's one of those old-school Americanized 60s anime dubs. The setting is changed to the West and characters are renamed in a very cheesy way, much like the 60s Astro Boy dub. Instead of Detective Yokota, you have Special Agent Tobar, which is robot spelled backwards, something the characters never seem to stop pointing out early on. 
Professor Tani becomes Professor Genius and Chief Tanaka becomes Chief Fumblethumbs. The acting can be at times comically robotic, a lot of extra dialogue is added, making for a lot of pointless narration. The awesome Japanese opening theme, which you're hearing right now in the background, is replaced with a less awesome but still fun US song. But the lyrics, along with the American animated visuals, represent the show very, very poorly. What's interesting though is the out-of-place cartoony dinosaur, Flesher Superman did the very same thing in the 40s. I nonetheless enjoyed the dub, the writers were comically self-aware about the awkward localization and shift of location which is absolutely hilarious. Don't see anything yet. Easy now. Good thing I know my way around. Making those signs oriental sure doesn't help find your way. Even beyond that, the comedy is westernized well, the redundancy doesn't reach Technoman levels and it actually fits 8-man's obvious inspiration. Superman and other old American superhero comics were full of redundant exposition. The acting is rarely irredeemable and the whole thing has a cozy, old-school air that really grew on me. And then you have the bootleg subtitles for some of the episodes that didn't get officially dubbed, which are absolutely hilarious in their ineptitude. They're not completely incoherent, and you can still easily follow the story, but goddamn look at some of this shit. While the dub handles the often intentionally comical nature of the show well, the subs are a great source of unintentional comedy. The bootleg subtitles that I could get my hands on were for the two-parter story Superhuman Mutant, focusing on the aforementioned villainous psychic children, and by the end it's really obvious why it never got dubbed back in the day. I won't spoil it, but holy crap, it goes to an unexpectedly dark place and there's no way 60s American television would have allowed that. Some of my personal favorite parts of the show are the comical ones, and they're intentionally comical at that, it's not just all ironic camp. There were likely a ton of different writers and directors involved with the series, some focused on serious sci-fi, others on crime drama, etc. But the comical moments are an absolute treat and they are shockingly close to a Japanese Roger Ramjet. Sometimes the jokes were always there, and sometimes they appear to come from the dub writers, but still, they tend to be legitimately funny more often than not. These episodes are also drawn in a way that's inherently and intentionally comical, with really cartoony character designs and drawings, along with very nice visual gags. I love the contrast between the American comic book inspired design of the protagonist and some of the wacky, loosely designed goons. With some of these, it feels like the anime staff were given absolute freedom and were told just draw whatever, it doesn't matter, and I don't mean that in a bad way. There's barely any style holding some of these together and I actually love it because you have no idea what crazy design you'll come across next. This guy is actually from the manga though, but I still really like him so I'll include him in this video. Chief Tanaka or Chief Fumblethumbs is a goofy and charming character with an equally goofy and charming design, and a lot of the silly moments revolve around him, making him my favorite character. While the really comical episodes were my personal highlight, the average episode is more serious, yet nonetheless still creative and fun. There are some moments that are stupid or lame, an entire episode manages to reach so bad its good status in its entirety, but most of the episodic adventures are unironically fun to watch in a way that's quite similar to 60's Ultraman, and in fact, this show did the story of a giant rampaging monster that feeds on electricity years before Ultraman. There were no set rules for what an 8-man story should be, so episodes could just do whatever. You might start your viewing session with a story about uncovering a corporate conspiracy and then watch a Body Snatchers-inspired alien invasion story. 
or one of the multiple episodes about the relationship between machine and man and how it can backfire in spectacular ways. Some of the absolute highlights, though, are the major dramatic stories taken straight from the manga, like the one about the showdown between Eight Man, the professor's adopted son, and his actual son. It managed to make me feel sad by the end, which is pretty impressive for a goofy 60s superhero television cartoon. I was going to list some standout episodes for you to watch, but really, most of the show kept me entertained quite consistently. Also worth bringing up is that, at least according to Japanese Wikipedia, the war-obsessed country known simply as the Republic of Armaco in the anime was, in the original manga, none other than the good old US of A. And I mean, this wasn't just the dub, it was also changed in the original Japanese, so it was deemed too anti-America for Japan. <laughs> the show looks pretty good for its time and budget. Of course, you have the usual, what the fuck is this, oh my god, reaction from the average viewer, seeing as it's a cheap 60s black and white anime. But the visuals get the job done, the comical episodes have some top-notch cartoony artwork and the more serious episodes are filled with screen-cap-worthy, film-noir-esque compositions. There's a lot of memorable shots in here and some really impacting use of black and white contrast. You'll find various creative little touches like the shiny, detailed and realistic look of the giant eel monster. You even have the occasional moment of fluid animation, and they can be quite fun to watch. More than anything else, though, 8-Man is full of the kind of inventive, varied, wacky, and above all else, unrealistic stories that work best in drawings and animation. It's obviously dated and campy, but if you're into robots, B-movie giant monsters, film noir crime stories, alien invasions, and all sorts of other old-school superhero adventures that this show covers, it's a great little gem to uncover and tons of fun.